everybody's talking about they do cloud. They say that we're cloud this, we're cloud this, but there's, there's a definition of cloud and people have different definitions. So what I usually do is it's like, let's just pick one. Let's pick NIST's definition of cloud and then every, we'll just agree with that. So I may have a different interpretation. My interpretation is that it's the delivery of flexible, scalable, elastic services through internet technologies. Generally, that's it. Well, we have a lot of infrastructure that we build, and it costs a lot of money to keep modernizing the infrastructure. And the great thing about cloud, when you look at some of the commercial services that are available, is that you don't have to build this capability. You can pay by the drink. You can get what you need as you go. It, and it gives you the ability to, um, to only invest the amount that you need and not over-invest in infrastructure, as the case may be. I also think that it's, um, gives the developer, if you look at the scientific research and development uh, organizations, it gives the developer the ability to have their own sandbox, so to speak. So they don't have to go out and buy a servers and networks. They can create, they can use platform as a service and they can do the kind of capabilities that they want. And then when they're done, it's gone away. I think that we probably, maybe one of the, if we get there, I think that the biggest impediment that would have been re removed is our psychological barrier to say that we can't do it and we do things this way and not that way. I just had an offline conversation about risk aversion in the government and how slow government is to adopt things many times and so then a lot of those barriers in five years would have been removed. You know one of the one of the barriers to adoption is vendor lock-in and you, you, you don't want to go this way because you're going to be locked into you know who's ever cloud that you're in. As things open then you have more availability of those services. It's interesting because when you ask the, what, what's going to happen in five years it's almost like we kind of repeat ourselves in history and I was just reading about like the IBM System 360 days where there's, it's definitely proprietary and then something happened that made it more open so you could run IBM software on any platform and that was just at the time a revolutionary thing to happen. But then more revolution happens and then it was more open than what IBM did. So this openness gives you the ability to, to not get locked into a vendor. Well, I think one problem is that there's a lot of hype. There's, there's so much, you talked about the number of conferences that are, that are around about it. And a lot of times the hype makes you think, well, maybe this isn't real. Maybe this isn't a, a technology or a capability that has some value. Um, when we did, when Homeland, Department of Homeland Security was created, everything was Homeland Security. Um, when the eGov Act passed, everything was eGov. And then it kind of like died off about what was really eGov and what was really uh, Homeland Security. And cloud is like that. And there's so much hype and talk about it, you don't know whether it's real or not real. So you don't know which, which one it is. And that hype is actually a barrier of adoption because some people who've been around long enough to see these hype cycles come and go will say, oh, this is just another one that'll pass. And they'll, they'll just wait for it. So I think the hype is actually a barrier to increasing adoption with cloud.